Oh, hello there. Welcome back to the Agostino Zynga Show, episode number 316 with me, your host, Agostino Zynga. What's going on? How's it going? How are you feeling? Good. Amazing. Great. How am I? Eh, been better. Been better. Not going to lie. Um, I think this uh, quarantine lockdown is kind of slowly but surely getting to me, but not in a way that you'd imagine, right? I'm not desperate to go out and drink piss warm beer somewhere in the middle of Victoria Park. I'm not desperate to go and eat a fucking sausage and bean melt somewhere in the middle of Greg's. Um, I'm neither desperate to go and sit in some dingily lit, um, overly warm Starbucks somewhere in the middle of Liverpool Street. I don't care about those kind of things. I just want people to be outside so I can watch people outside and I can feel as if I have the option to go outside. That's all. I probably won't go outside as much as I was doing in the past anyway because I, I was a bit of a hermit, right? I turned into a bit of a turtle in my previous, what, last... Yeah, my, maybe my previous two, uh, two outings were big ones, but apart from that, I mostly spent most of my time indoors anyway, so it's not as if I'm missing anything big, but Jesus Christ, man. And then part of the issue is as well, like, you just know, you know, wherever country you're in, United States, you know, the UK, somewhere in Europe... Your government is very well ill-equipped. Yeah, they're ill-equipped to restart the economy. They're ill-equipped to restart life. You know, it's one thing to turn off the lights in the party, right? It's one thing for the police officer to come in and just shut off the rave, right? Pull out, pull the mixer out from the wall, right? Uh, take off the needles from the decks and all that stuff and take everyone to USBs. But it's another thing to get the thing restarted again. That's the hardest part to do. And no one knows how to do it so far. No one's really figured it out. So we're all kind of in a bit of a, how do you say... We're all a bit fucked, really, in that regard. That's what I would say in French. We're all a bit F-U-C-K-E-D. But hey, we make the best of it as we do in it. As humans, we always kind of prevail in that regard. So I'm not that worried about it. But hey, let's go. Um, some audio improvements. I think the previous one that I uploaded podcast-wise, um, the audio was a bit mad. I tried to do this weird filter thing that kind of allows you to, you know, mech around your filter and get a bit creative but I thought you know what fuck that let's just go back to the usual let's go back to the normal uh slapped on a little you know little mic head cozy on this thing and hopefully it should be sounding nice and clear for everyone listening um so loads of things to kind of recap on some stuff that I missed out on on the last episode that I forgot, didn't want to upload because the quality was bad so I'm just going to steam through, through a few things and then we'll see where we go from there but you know the usual um assortment of things will be discussed today and then we can see where we are by the end of the show so number one topic to discuss is this pretty um funny video i saw on twitter the other day which essentially encapsulates or is a good representation of just what's going on around the world this is probably this is from the uk but you know this is something that you could see happening around the world for the most part it's something that's really fascinated me um why is it right that the people that are against the lockdown um, the ones who are up to going out right why is it whenever they get interviewed by the tv or by the media they seem to interview the most you know ill-informed uh poor you know un inarticulate unartic whatever that phrase is even i can't say which is an irony in itself but people that can't necessarily you know uh don't have really a way with words they tend to get those people on the screen more so than people that actually know why they're out there because i'm sure there's some you know segment of the population that's like you know what fuck it i'm gonna take a calculated risk i'm gonna go out do my thing if i get it i get it or they have the thinking that you know i'm a particular age range or a particular background particular region of the country it should be okay judging by the data i've looked at but most people aren't I, I would imagine the majority of people aren't just going out blindly they're going out with some level of analysis some level of like research they kind of made a calculated uh they've kind of make a, made a decision to take a calculated risk in order to kind of you know continue on with their lives but for some reason they only tend to kind of show us or the, for some reason the viral moments tend to come from the people who aren't as well informed as the rest of us might be and this is a really good example of this is a video from uh who's this guy some guy called nick dixon itv on twitter and he tweeted this earlier on i'm pretty sure it's part of a longer segment but this basically encapsulate the issue at hand here in a really succinct and clear way i'll play it for you now me personally i think the way we're going i know we're out drinking beer so it looks like we're saying what's good for us is not good for everyone else but 
i.e. being a hypocrite. If we carry on the way we're going, I think we're going to have a major lockdown in two weeks, the way the, re the restrictions are. And in two weeks, I think we're going to see a massive rise in the deficit. I think, it is so I, I, I think we should be more stricter like Spain and none of us be allowed out. But when it's family, it's a little bit different when it comes to six people. Because we're all family and we all know we're and we all isolated. are in each other's homes. So we're allowed to do that. Whilst everyone's been in lockdown for so long, it's the hottest day of the year, everyone's going to come to the beach. Especially when you've got places serving a beer. So, if anything, those three point of views are, you know, perfect represent perfect representation of just how difficult it is to navigate the whole lockdown thing and you know spare for people in government for having actually trying to have him to figure this out first you got the guy at the beginning right beer in hand tan sweatshirt tied around his neck he's got his driving glasses on you know a nice little stubble enjoying himself having a good earned beer at the end of the week he's well within his rights to say that you know we should be thinking about some measures to make sure we don't you know get a spike in cases just in case it then freaks out the government to lock us down again because an informed decision would lead you to believe that even if we do get a spike in cases we probably can go about having some sort of reopening having some sort of business running with some precautions in place as long as we're sensible but i think the fact that they started so let's say because we had such a hands-off approach in the beginning um and if you know you know temperamentally British people aren't the most um, law, I won't say law abiding, but we're not the most, um, we need clear instructions, you know, British people, we need to be told this is that, that is that, we can't be left to our own devices, because if we left our own devices, we're just going to take the absolute piss, which is what you've seen, even, you know, since the beginning, actually, the lockdown in the UK, it's not really been observed that great, um, people have been, you know, slip snicking out here and there, not really taking it that seriously, <laughs> and then on the second part, <clears throat> you've got who did you have here you had the lady here talking about family right the fact that if you've got six members of one household going out together it shouldn't be as bad as people staying indoors she's got a valid point the only issue i have towards it is that none of these people are wearing masks none of them have gloves on and they're also not maintaining social distancing amongst each other so there's an argument to be had especially for the people that are anti wearing masks which i just don't really understand i've never really got that kind of point of view for some reason it's been turned into a political issue which it shouldn't be it shouldn't have been you know, a particular political issue it should just be like a you know an easy um sort of like yes or no and if you want to go outside you just have to wear a mask until things settle down that's just how it should be um of course as a way to prevent you catching an airborne disease and also an airborne virus and also as a way for you to kind of you know have a bit of solidarity with your other um you know members of your little community or whatever it may be or people live in the area that's what it was really in it in that respect but no one in this group is observing that no one in this group gives a shit about you know putting on these things so it's kind of a little bit of a piss take right if you're gonna go out and if you're gonna subscribe to this weird fant which is not weird really because you know you could you could argue that if you're gonna be indoors with your family members what's the difference of going outside what's the difference of going out to your garden what's the difference of going to a park what's the difference of going to the beach it's you know they're extensions of themselves but i guess the f the level um the risk involved of going further away from your home you know into places that you haven't been and then catching an airborne this airborne virus is probably more pro is probably uh there's probably more chance of that happening the further you go away from your house i understand that but i still get her point but of course you would like someone to be wearing a mask and gloves and you know maintain some social distancing and then at the end here you've got these two lovely ladies who are essentially again um echoing the thoughts of a lot of people that have been hanging out in victoria park and all that sort of stuff all the hipsters around there as you know as uh uh as weird as it all looks and as loosery as they all look walking down columbia road market you know where there's no market open you know just trying to get some fresh air sitting around you know in circles drinking red stripe reminiscing about times when they were at some wanky N nts party as dumb as that is you still have to be you know you have to have a car made of stone to not feel any kind of sympathy for these kind of for people in that kind of age range that kind of background right who had these big goals had these big plans in mind about what they're going to do um you know festivals are going to parties holidays family members you know holiday romances that were kind of be, you know that have kind of been shuttered without any um hope of them restarting you have to feel a little bit for them that their sons are completely gone and in pure you know in the typical british british fashion the one time we get this coronavirus is the one time we have you know some of the best weather we've had in london for you know 
for God knows when, is when we've been locked indoors with little to no respite going outside. And if you know anything about our parks, they're very, very hit and miss in this country. Some are good, some are really bad, but there's no in between. So luckily they live next to Brighton. They can go to the quote unquote beach, but I don't know, man. I have lots of beef for it. Again, it's not something I'm going to do. I've maintained my decision and my stance that even when they, you know, once everything gets opened up and they opened up the doors and say, hey, you can go and do whatever you want to do. I'm still going to give an extra month. I'm not taking no chances. There's no need for it. Um, again, I'm not. There's nothing outside that I'm so desperate to do that I'm willing to risk my health for. I'm not really that desperate for it. So whenever everything is back in, it's back in. It is what it is. But I do have sympathy and understanding for people that own small businesses, people that are working in the service industry, whose jobs have been essentially halted and scrapped, scrapped for the most part. You know, they're going to have to just um, pivot to a new career or decide to do, yeah, pivot to a new career or just take a break from something. I don't know. So it must be really scary times. But for me, Going to the beach and having a beer is not really in my radar at the moment, I would say. But hey, it could change in the future. You never know. So next on the list here, we have um, detailed pictures of the Travis Scott and Nike collab. This is the what? This is the third iteration or fourth or fifth. Don't know, but it's a lot. Travis has done a lot of Nikes with, um, he's done a lot of Nike shoes so far. And to be honest, I don't think I would wear every single one. But I have to say, he's what I've got. I'll probably wear the majority of them. It's probably one or two that I'm probably not a fan of at all. But you know, for as Nike collaborations go, considering he's a hip hop artist, who you know, usually those kind of guys don't really give a shit. No, so don't give a shit about shoes, but they're into shoes. But you know, they're not really into sneakers that way. They just like to wear cool stuff. So it's pretty hard for him to kind of translate that idea of wearing cool stuff into doing a good design. But Travis seems to be really into it. Obviously, he takes his merch really seriously. You see what he does with his live shows and his album art and his video directions. It shouldn't be no surprise, but still, it's good to see it in actual real life actuality. And maybe this is an interesting um, decision for him to take on the model of the 270 because number one, it's probably the most worn shoe um, in the hood with like Romanian mums and stuff like that. They love wearing a 270. I'm not sure why. Maybe because of the big bubble and shit, but it's really popular with like, you know, kind of Romanian immigrants that live around the area that I live in. Number two, it's not very popular, right? With like the Kipster hype kids. I don't really think so. I think when they first dropped and they had some really nice OG sort of like Nike, what what's that shoe? Is it 97? not 97 maybe 92 it had the kind of a similar sort of vibe as the mx 92 i think that's called st um with the sort of like bubble on it um some of the earlier colors that came out that are like teal grape you know some really nice classic sort of like air max colorways with like three colors on it white a gray and whatever kind of contrast they look really cool but they didn't really seem to catch on especially because i think a lot of these problems come from the fact that there is no crooked tongue substitute right crooked tongues forums was really good because it was a way for people like myself who aren't necessarily, who wouldn't necessarily class themselves as hype beasts because that's you know you, you don't want to ever be known as a hype beast, that's a super wanky term. And you wouldn't also want to be known as somebody as a sneakerhead, right? You'd be somewhere in between where you just buy stuff that you like, right? Shoes wise. You might be just have an interest in buying trainers. And I think those type of guys would have appreciated two seventy more than the kids nowadays because they just don't care about those models until their favorite rapper or artist or you know have um what do you call it uh public figure on instagram wears them they don't care they just want to see the coolest thing those guys are wearing on their feet and if it's not that they're not going to do it so credit to travis for picking it or for nike for proposing it and for travis for just agreeing to do it because i still think it's a big risk to do this to do his you know take his kind of code and apply it to a 270 again it's not the most popular model it's not a model people have been tearing down you know the the barricades of stores to kind of get their hands on so for him to kind of like you know add his little touch to it in order to bring it to a new customer base is cool i like what he's done with it and i think if anything it might be my favor of what the work that travis has done with nike just because it's a bit different from everything else the air force ones the jordans they have to be expected right he could have done that anytime in his career but i think the 270s are a really good um summation of where he is now as an artist in my opinion
So this is the 270. Here's some hype. It's news that says Travis Scott and Nike and Max 270 receives a closer look at a release update of release date. So yeah, I think they were meant to release earlier in the year, right? Then they got scrapped. I'm not sure if it's because of the lockdown or because of something that's happened, but they were meant to release earlier. I'm going to say March or something. Then they've got pushed back, pushed back again until I think they're releasing the end of the month. So May 29th or something, I think they're coming out. But these are some um, extra pictures for them. So you've got a nice sort of like suede mudguard i'm assuming suede or new buck you've got this interesting application here on the apple which i'm sure is different from the other 270s i'm sure normal 270s aren't like this at the top and you've got this nice little bit of uh what do you call that pile right pile on the on the here with the essence with the nike essence midsole again in this creamy rusticy color which is kind of been his staple so far and some nice pops of red again which i mentioned previously the other shoe might be the stray rats at new balance there's been a lot of like red accents on laces or red laces themselves so that's a big thing happening in the last few years maybe it's a nod to the outdoorsman's tour sort of stuff but i'm not too sure but i think they look really cool there and of course on the instep and it's got a nice little pull tab as well there maybe carrying on from the stuff he's done with jordan is that a pull tab there i'm sure me I'm not sure if that is a pull tab, right? It must be a pull tab. So the laces maybe loop through and you can pull and tab it on there. Might be a little nod to what Travis likes himself, right? Because he doesn't strike me as somebody that would take time to like, do his laces. He seems like he's the kind of guy that you know, stamps his feet into shoes. So maybe that's why that hole comes in. He doesn't do his laces, so he likes to have the ability to just pull them up. I like this sort of like mesh net thing on the inside as well. And yeah, man, I think the whole outer looks interesting. Like I said, I'm not too sure if this is a a new thing, but I think this whole wave stuff is fairly new in what Travis has done. I'm pretty sure most 270s have got like a mesh thing. And of course, you've got this nice little uh, swoosh here on the front of the mud guard. Reminds me of some old school Atmos Air Max one. So this looks really, really beautiful, to be fair. Clear outsole as well on the outside. It looks really nice. And then you've got another, is this another 270 that's been made, right? Is that another 270 or what is that? I'm not too sure what that second model is, but the second model looks like it's been turned completely inside out or it's been made non-linear and all sort of vibe. But let's see what it says in the article. It says after months of teasers included a rumor release date over a month ago, the Travis Scott take on an Air Max 270 React sneaker is finally set to release. The sneaker is set to make part of the Cactus Trails collection alongside a range of military inspired apparel that recently made its debut. The multi texture sneaker references his outdoor influence and Scott's passion for the vintage clothing through its polar fleece collar and the use of tint of sulfur dye across the upper midsole and air unit. Other features include the ACG inspired pops of color alongside the custom tongue tab, okay, which we mentioned before. Lace lock, an additional swoosh on the sh on the toe, okay, cool. That's the additional thing you put on the front. Yeah, that's really cool. The C finishing off the designs, Cactus Jack logo stitched on the cross uh, heel tabs. In addition to the Cactus Trails release, Travis Scott and Nike also linked up a special kids version of the shoe. Okay, this is the kids version, then I'm assuming that one there. Maybe, I don't know. Let's see. Kids version of the shoe. Um, sporting similar palette and the sneakers also features a cactus jack cross on the tongue the, the, take a closer look at the sneakers in the gallery below you can also expect Travis Scott 272 in Repsol on May 29th Nike you on May 29th for more information below so you got that guy I'm not sure what his name is that dude that does all the videos the reviews of shoes online he's got like a monotone voice he's modeling them um yeah, so you've got that first trail there. He ties his shoes a bit shit, to be fair. His, his drop is a bit dead, so I'm not going to take my impression of what he's wearing. But I like the apparel. I think the apparel looks really nice as well, actually. And again, like I said, like that nice clear sole is banging, actually, on those. But, yeah, it's hard to kind of see whether or not these look good on him because he doesn't look the best in trainers, does he? No offense to the lad. And then you've got another clip here from Travis Scott's Instagram page. It says trail guide named Jack costume, which is pretty cool. You got the shirt, sweatshirts and pants. I love that. With the massive pockets on the front. Perfect for any person that wants to go and hit those LA trails or wherever you may live. So yeah, I like them. Man. I think again, like I said, maybe my favorite of the Travis collab, just because it's a bit more of a risk um, involved in them. They're a little bit more interesting to look at. And again, they kind of serve my niche as a sneakerhead where I kind of want my special collaborations to either take an existing silhouette and elevate it or take a silhouette that no one's taking the taking any notice of and really bring it to the forefront i think that's what most people in that position should be doing but i understand you know if you want to just 
you know, get the low hanging fruit or just, you know, make sure you don't fuck up and make any mistakes because there is a lot of pressure, I'm assuming, to do a collaboration as well. You don't want to get it wrong. So if you don't want to get it wrong, you probably have over your rights to pick an Air Force One, pick a Jordan One, whatever it may be, right? And just kind of get that out of the way. But if you really want to have a legacy and go down in history, you need to kind of get out of that zone and flex your muscles and pick a shoe that isn't really looked upon that well to kind of bring back and show the kids that, hey, there's other stuff in the Nike wanted to check out but yeah i like these man i really really like these i think they look banging uh may 29th let's see if i'm lucky maybe most more likely than not i'm probably gonna catch a big fat l but you never know it you never bloody know so let's move on what else we need to talk about here we've got my list we've got genius move from john okay this is a this is a nice happy go lucky story actually during the lockdown mm, there's been i've seen a lot of th- what have i seen a lot of things online i've, I've seen some mutterings online especially some people posting the f- uh, fact that you know you shouldn't be too hard on yourself during the lockdown you should give yourself a break this is a thing that caught everybody off guard and you shouldn't be expected to be like you know writing a sonnet you know uh crafting your next screenplay designing a collection or making a new song during lockdown you shouldn't be expected to be doing that right whilst i agree with the sentiment i still think there's a part of me that kind of doesn't want to accept that kind of level of mediocrity right i don't want to be uh give myself ready-made excuses that everyone's going to be using for why i'm not where i should be um i think these moments and of course they're not planned they come out of the blue but they probably are a fair reflection as to who are who's really doing the work and who's actually just complaining right who's actually willing to kind of put their head down and do the work regardless what's going on around them and who's going to let the situation going around them dictate on how they do the work again it's really difficult to do i know if you're just working a regular job and you were doing a bit of a side hustle that required you to go outside it's you know it, it's ne- it's nearly impossible for you to figure out an alternative but if you can figure out an alternative to keep that creative juice flowing or to just you know flex you know keep that muscle kind of uh, going or whatever it may be or just to keep yourself entertained do it if you can um but i really do think there are some really cool stories such as this story that's come out that really goes to show that um this is this lockdown and this pandemic has really changed the fabric of the entertainment industry and you know business in general um it's and it's never going to be the same ever again because this is a really good example of it so this is a story from the hollywood reporter it says john krasenik's krasen kiss krasen kiss john krasen kiss uh some good news sells to viacom cbs following a massive bidding war so if you're not familiar with this this guy's been doing this uh, show on youtube called some good news right which i'm assuming is a reaction towards you know most of the things we're seeing on uh your regular news channels are just all doom and gloom about how many people have died about some three-year-old being coughed on and now it's in the ic and now it's intensive care you know just the most horrible stories you can think of have been kind of swelling around during coronavirus lockdown because you know they're the ones that generate the most clicks and you know the news tv stations need to get their money so it is what it is so i'm guessing he made this tv show in the kind of uh as a reaction to it and it's been pretty popular and then for the last few weeks it's kind of stopped and put it on a bit of pause gone on hiatus but essentially what he's done is that he proved his concept he made a proof of concept he put a show together you know with his kind of you know with a slapdash m- couple of members of the team maybe a small unit of people put it together made sure that content of the show actually works and now he's got the numbers which is most most important because youtube displays numbers likes engagement in terms of comments if you've got um other plugins you know you can get some more details on the video how it's performing so there's some hard you know black and white numbers that you can read there if you're uh, a major broadcasting company and this makes this completely changes the way people pitch shows in the past right where you have to convince somebody of the idea to begin with now you can actually shoot it on your phone with the webcam and then get that proof of concept in front of the person on their table and there's no real need to kind of put it back and forth because the numbers don't lie well they do lie sometimes but it depends but hey let's go let's says the article it says the feel good web series will have a multi-platform showcase so let's continue the article it says john krasin krasinkis krasinski krasinski yeah john krasinski some good news is on the move following a massive bidding war the feel good web series has been licensed to viacom cbs and a rich deal cbs all access which will be rebranded uh this summer and bolstered the more original 
More originals from the Cross of Viacom CBS portfolio will have the first window for the new episodes before they move to a number of the company's linear networks. While Krasinski will continue to be involved in executive producer, he will not host the new episodes. A new host will be named at a later date, though Krasinski will have some sort of on-air presence. It's yet to be determined which of the Viacom platforms will have the second window for the new SGN episodes and whether the broadcast network will be involved. In addition to new episodes, other short-form content content that will live within its variety of CBS uh, fold will also be in, in produced so that's a great you know a little great lesson there in that he produced a show which he might have already had the intention to sell but he did so without knowing who's going to host it who's going to be the, who's going to be the presenter which imagine trying to pitch that to you know a room full of executives right um, people that can actually sign stuff off imagine trying to pitch a show that you don't have actually have a host in mind for but you have the overall idea and concept for the show already down pat it's very hard to kind of get that across in slides or you know with talking points it's very difficult to do you just need to show somebody the evidence of it and once someone sees the evidence they're going to want to know how it's kind of done with people in general what the views what's the reaction been so if you can do that now with youtube and people are willing to more so do that now and kind of break away from the conventional um, way of doing things in hollywood which is you know it's super stuck in its ways but i see this as being a really big sign as to the changes that's going to come in terms of how people actually produce and pitch shows I think again this is another good example of it again maybe he might have not he probably would have done this if this was if we didn't have a lockdown but it's an amazing thing for himself as well to have that kind of you know producer credit on his CV as well from all the good stuff he's done in the past um, it continues here it says uh, it says Duh, duh, duh. could not be more excited and proud of the partner with CBS Viacom to be bringing some good news to many more people Krasinski said on Thursday in a statement from the first episode our goal was to create a new show dedicated to entirely good news uh, never did I expect it to be joining the ranks of such a historic news organization of CBS sources say CBS Entertainment Group President George Cheeks was instrumental in bringing Krasinski to the S and SGN to the company Sheiks who previously spent decades at NBC Universal took over from John Iliano in late March this is believed to be one of the first major deals the series will be produced in house by the video for your comedy central productions oh this is very 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 risky because comedy central has been terrible so far as a conglomerate also have ownership stake in SGN comedy central productions excited okay cool during his role on YouTube, Krasinski self-financed, produced, self-produced weekly shows designed to spread, um, as its title indicates, some good news audience was saying at home amid a novel coronavirus. Sources to Hollywood reported that Krasinski initially resisted the urge to sell the series despite a wave of incoming calls from a wide variety of suitors. Krasinski's team received a flood of inquiries for this year's viral first episode with suitors including broadcast networks and streaming services. His original plan was to continue to make SGM for free and wide um, audience that YouTube provided. As the series continues to produce weekly viral episodes financed by the office grad, um, corporate sponsors began to spoil the series with giveaways AT&T for example provided a giveaway with the first uh, COVID first responders while the Boston Red Sox supply tickets for future games with the Viacom CBS door the second window across linear networks will continue Krasinski's vision of seeing CJ episodes reach a wider audience that's really cool to see man honestly and again I wonder if this will have any ramifications with it dance music scene could you see somebody doing some massive numbers of live stream right somebody fairly unknown or you know let's say someone that's not well known within the kind of you know uh the pop circuit of techno djs or dance media djs and suddenly they're able to uh, leverage the numbers they have on social or the numbers they get on twitch and stuff and other streaming platforms in order to get them some in real life gigs could that be a thing because there's also the benefit of you know you've seen the numbers so if i'm if i'm a big DJ on twitch and i've got the numbers to back it up i can present it to a booking agent they can see the actual numbers i'm getting from when i'm streaming and i've also got the other advantage of they can see the kind of engagement and the community interaction that i have with the people that are in and around my scene right through the chat through the comments um, you can probably get a lot about the person of course more importantly you can actually listen to their mix what they play that could be an actual thing I, I, I can see that happening for sure imagine that being the thing like people are actually getting booked off the back of their streams they're doing on twitch and stuff that'll be flipping awesome to see actually going forward um let's let's hope let's hope but yeah congrats to john krasinski for that deal i thought that was pretty 
genius move next up on the docket we have the supreme and north face collection which actually dropped on thursday so it's sort of long gone by now but you know seeing as i recorded this before and i didn't actually get a chance to say anything about it i thought i'd do it again in it because why the f not so this might be as i mentioned in the other episode this possibly might be my most favorite supreme collection they've done so far supreme north face collaboration they've done maybe in recent years um number one obviously because the design is a bit different you've got this amazing uh shell jacket with pockets all over the front which is kind of reminiscent to a really cool collaboration i remember double taps doing with maybe Hader Porter or something like that. I remember it being a really cool collaboration with those pockets all over the jacket. Mostly, you know, not just the front, along the arms, the back as well. It was bloody incredible. So it kind of removes it to be of that or really cool um, fisherman type jackets that you know and love from other, I forgot what the companies are, but, you know, very traditional fisherman type anorak sort of jacket vibe that reminds me of and oddly enough i'm not really a fan of the tracksuit look that supreme does with north face but i think this looks actually pretty good as a as a tracksuit two-piece so um this news came uh, i think when was this the other day right uh it says he um uh supreme has worked with the north face on a new collection for spring 2020 the collection consists of a cargo jacket cargo vest belted cargo pant t-shirt adventure tote uh sun shield cam cat and floating keychain oh yeah the other the second thing that's the best in this collection is the tote bag the tote bag's bloody beautiful it says here yeah, made exclusive for supreme the cargo jacket features water resistant nylon with fully seam sealed construction the cargo vest features water resistant nylon and a breathable mesh while the belt cargo pant features water resistant nylon with rip offs to lower his legs the adventure tote features a resistant 400d nylon and then you actually see the stuff and you're like god damn they snapped on this absolutely snapped so you got the jacket featured there and it comes this amazing sort of like tie-dye-ish print you soon dip dye i'm not sure what that fucking application is on the actual color of it but it looks banging kind of reminds me a little bit of something you might get from like cp company or stone island actually in that regard very 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 beautifully done and then of course you've got the image there with the same jacket with the uh, the uh, review from the back i'm not a fan of the back pocket that a lot of these supreme tends to be going for these jackets with this massive pocket at the back and i'm also not a fan of this you know the entire font of supreme on the back pocket i would rather much rather it be a tonal thing you know maybe a white tone or an off-white tone or gray tone something matching some of the colors out on the back um that would make it a little bit more in a little bit less brazen to look at because you know they've already, we've already got two logos here on the on the sleeve we don't need an additional one here on the back but you know maybe it's a tie-in with the with the with the logo here on the back i don't know but i would prefer a little bit less of the big supreme root on there but again who am i and this is probably my favorite color in the khaki it looks stupendous man looks so so good nice big snap buttons there on the front as well it looks like right and some fastening hooks there as well at the top oh so well done man really 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 well done and then of course what else do you have here then you've got the vest and the shorts the vest i'm not really a big fan of i think vests are you know i think kids tend to like or younger people tend to like the vest a little bit more maybe because it's a bit more of a versatile piece so you don't have to carry like a tote bag or a satchel you know i'd imagine or like a bum bag thing over your chest or a really big jacket a vest kind of is a bit of a cheat in that regard right it kind of is a bit of a layer and you can also stuff things in the pockets which you know when you're a kid at that age and you're just about in the scene that's what you always got you've always got stuff on you i remember that was how i was always had little trinkets in my pockets but of course this is one of my other favorite bits in the collection this tote bag is absolutely banging my only um reservation or indication about it would have been older i'd like to have seen another strap on the inside that kind of goes across your body but I know a lot of companies don't tend to make their bags like that, maybe because it's uncomfortable for it to be slapping against your thigh, this big thing. But I don't know, maybe that's why they've made the shoulder straps adjustable because they look pretty cool. I like the idea of having sh adjustable shoulder straps. Yeah, adjustable, you know, hand, yeah, shoulder straps, yeah, shoulder straps. I think they look pretty cool. Um, done really well. Again, nice tie dye, loads of nice p compartments everywhere, zips and buttons and whatever to stuff things in and yeah and it's got I'm, I'm assuming like a good unconstructed bottom so it's not rigid you can just stuff things in it and it can take the form of whatever you stuff in it that'd be a good thing and again a little strap on the middle 
of the bag as well where the zip goes so that you can fasten some things out and make sure nothing is spilling out right but yeah very very well done with the shorts too the toe is a sleeper pick and you've got the cap which i would be a fan of if i didn't have this huge hair that cap would go a long way in my collection but unfortunately the hair doesn't permit me to wear any kind of supreme cam cats there they're not in my reality unfortunately <laughs> so here's again the tie-dye jacket looks absolutely banging really well done again i would have preferred to have seen the the pocket without the massive logo on the back or maybe done in a kind of a tonal way but i think it's actually embroidered on so there's no way of getting that off unfortunately um which is a good thing for quality you know it means it's embroidered it's actually going to finish pretty well and again the, the white is the same right it's looking why does the screen printed to you what do you think i don't know maybe that is screen printed i don't know if you've got the jacket yourself leave me a comment in the below and let me know if that front and the back is actually screen printed or embroidered because that looks quite interesting regardless and i'm assuming it's the same here for the hood in it yeah it's just too many supreme tags all over it i don't know when that happened actually with them they usually would have in days gone by they would have maybe had a little red tab somewhere maybe they stopped doing the red tabs based on levi's i don't know maybe it's a copyright infringement or trademark infringement i'm not too sure but i would prefer less you know less of the stamps all over the place and more subtle nods as to who done the collaboration that would be a lot better to do and of course in the quintessential black that was banging you can see someone like drake wearing this isn't it he loves wearing these sort of light jackets um yeah really well done man i'll take each one easily of course and then next you've got the vest which again i'm not not a big fan of but i like the finish of it of course i think the vest probably looks best in the black right the tactical vest or something a lot better in that sort of colorway and you've got the pants that you can zip uh the legs off i'm assuming and switch them around or turn them into shorts which is quite a good into which is quite a cool little trick there they've done with the actual pants i think it looks pretty cool yeah why didn't they make the yeah why didn't they make the color of the back print the same color oh it's the same it's black i thought it's kind of a lilac my bad let's continue uh, then you got what are these shorts as well so there's shorts and there's those things that we saw i'm assuming or oh, is that different I'm not too sure then you've got the t-shirt that they did the profits too right and you've got a tote bag of course that comes in the same colors i'm assuming as the jacket yep black that sort of tie dye material and of course the khaki so yeah and the hat as well to finish things off or oh, no the key to finish off as well but yeah very, very very well done man one of my favorite collections so far easily from supreme in terms of their four winter stuff and which um no so instead of their in terms of their north face collaborations because usually um you would say their best outwear comes during the winter and it's so for them to pull out something like that out of the bag during this during the you know, summer times is something to be congratulated on for sure for 100 percent sure um what else i want to speak about here we have oh big news in the podcasting world joe rogan signed a massive exclusive deal with spotify which i'm sure you're all aware of but i thought i'd give a bit of my two pence on it so this is news that broke when we're gonna say the last couple of days right news broke of joe rogan's deal now people are trying to you know count his count his pockets and understand what the money is involved in it actually um but i think it's again well deserved for someone like a joe rogan considering the amount of stuff content he puts out considering the amount of the amount of work that goes into putting those interviews together and just you know consistency over the years rips rewards really it's another good indication of it. if you just stick to doing something um for longer than others and you keep iterating you keep improving you keep listening to feedback adding details and just maybe focusing on your on your niche on your little lane um it will pay dividends again it's a long game because you know he's been at it for decades but um this is only a sign of things to come and also an indication of just maybe um the monopoly that youtube has with podcasting talent because you know oddly enough joe rogan turned youtube into a podcasting you know platform because he put his clips on there and his whole episodes on there so i think a lot of youtubers maybe seen the kind of traction a lot of these podcasts are getting and they switched their channels from when you know vlogging kind of got a bit boring because it's you know you've you, you've essentially have to you essentially have to live an incredibly interesting life to make vlogging from the lens that you know you look for it as a youtuber be exciting if you want to do it you know for the rest of your life you have to i don't know what kind of life you have to live but it has to be so out of kilter 
that it requires you to record every day that you can and again you're gonna have to do it every day you're gonna have to make sure you have the editors on board or do it yourself it's a very hard song to do so it was only natural that those youtubers would maybe pivot away from like the daily vlogs more into like you know the episodic of things or twice a week whatever it may be called and then have an an element of their brand that kind of you know spoke to the podcasting realm because if anything podcasts are like an audio version of a vlog and that you're getting to know people um, over a prolonged period of time you get to know their voice inflections you get to know how they are you know, their views on certain things that go on in the world um people use podcasts as a way to get to know people and maybe kind of view the world through their eyes so it's only natural that those youtubers would kind of fall into podcasting so it's really strange and really funny to see kind of rogan to kind of jump an abandoned ship from youtube to spotify and I want to see what happens now with the kids that have just suddenly turned their, you know, brand into like a podcasting brand. Right? I think of the David Dobricks and all those kind of dudes. I wonder what they're going to do now going forward because this boy if I was to come around and offer them a big bag, it actually might not be advantageous for them to leave. They probably be better off to stay on YouTube because YouTube services both of their customer base. It services people that want to go see their vlogs and it services people that want to go listen to them speak about it night out on the weekend, right? Because there's this basically putting context to the videos you see. So you might go back to watch a video and then they could basically expound and tell you the other bits that weren't included in the video that make for a better story i don't know it's just to see what happens a power play but let's see read the article this is from variety i think we might have broke the news actually it says joe rogan will bring his podcast exclusively to spotify a multi-year licensing deal reported to be worth more than 100 million supposedly i've seen on the webs there's talking about it being 75 million flat per year for five years which is nuts with obviously the addition of bonuses and if you hit some certain milestones and stuff there obviously the money will go up but it's a guaranteed 75 per year for five years which is madding money and imagine if so you continue so it says here the Jorgen experience while the podcasting long running and most popular shows will be launching on Spotify exclusively this year the Rogan hosted comedy show comedy talk show sorry series will debut on Spotify on September the 1st 2020 on a non-exclusive basis with all episodes dating back to 2009 before becoming exclusive to the platform later in 2020 under the multi-year licensing deal that's pretty cool right so They've allowed him some runway to maybe migrate some of these listeners from YouTube or from Apple Podcasts over to Spotify. But maybe it's also a way to maybe in the background because, you know, feeds are, you know, a bit of a bitch. So because, you know, he's got over a thousand episodes, you know, most of which are two hours plus long. There might be just a technical aspect of it where they need to give himself a bit of a buffer in order to kind of make sure it all feeds through onto their rss feed i'm assuming who knows maybe i'm right maybe i'm wrong but i think that might be part of the reason and it continues here it says um with rogan spotify has handed one of the sorry has landed one of the podcasts in the biggest wells it's currently ranks as number two most popular on show on apple podcast after Barcelona sports call her daddy which has been involved in some interesting drama actually um according to apple a source familiar with the deal said rogan became sold on spotify's ability to build his audience worldwide after initially resisting the distribution of the podcast on the platform because he saw it as a primarily music service and because spotify wasn't offering to pay enough for licensing fees so more often more likely than not it's just mostly came down to an economic decision if you're rogan right he's obviously got fuck you money anyway right he made a buttload of cash during the he always mentions this during the what was that thing he did I forgot it doesn't matter but he i think per year he makes at least 30 million on youtube it's reported from his podcast so that's what we know only from the stuff he does on podcasting i'm assuming they didn't count anything he makes on the road as a comedian um from selling his specials we don't know any of that business so but let's it's fair to, it's fair to assume that he doesn't you know he's not short for cash but he but i'm sure it's a part and part of him even if he's not short for cash that's like you know what i put all this work in to make these youtube videos so i upload these stuff all these clips you know to research my uh, people that i'm interviewing people that come into my space only for it to be kind of uploaded to youtube and get immediately flagged or demonetized because i'm sure his channel has got hit with countless copy copyright strikes i'm sure he has probably more you know yellow dollar signs and green dollar signs in terms of monetization and the back end on these dashboards so it's not been the best of it's not been the easiest of time dealing with youtube and i do remember this one story that joe rogan always mentions about him being at some party and some youtube executive saying something really smarmy to him about free speech or something 
so I think the relationship with YouTube hasn't been the most you know hasn't been the smoothest and the fact that you know that Susan Wojcicki woman has said some really crazy shit that Joe Rogan's kind of responded to on his channel can lead me to believe that he probably wanted the ability to earn without having the you know having to worry that his channel might get demonetized during a month and you might see a complete slash in his earnings which happens quite often if you're a youtuber and you start speaking about controversial topics the month after you've done pretty well talking about nothing right it tends to kind of take a bit of a dip so maybe he might be like you know what i'm at that age now where i want i need to start looking after my kids kids right future generations to come so if he's able to secure a deal like the one he's reportedly got from spotify with some you know component some kind of cash up front to get the deal signed and then bonuses at the end to continue doing what he's doing in the licensing deal too you have to remember right which is essentially just a distribution deal they've got just you know they've basically bought the rights to have it exclusive on their platform for the next how many so years five or even many years it may be it's really no brainer if you're a rogan obviously if you're involved you know so if i come getting some kind of uh, creative direction involved or them having a kind of uh, an opinion on the guests that company show that would be something different but from where i stand this seems like a really really good deal especially for um podcasts in general going forward i think is also a good indication as just how strong the industry is at the moment uh it continues here it says in addition the podcast jerry will also produce a corresponding video episodes which will also be available on spotify as an in-app vodcast which is something we've not seen well obviously you know what we know is going to happen is that over the next few years when it kind of blows up we're going to see a standalone you know spotify vod app that's maybe going to be a bit of a youtube competitor in that it might maybe start off as mostly a music thing i'm not too sure but that could see that happening um but i like the idea that I think someone mentioned Jerry clips will stay around, but we're going to get all the uploads of the full videos via the vodcast that's going to be on built into Spotify, which is a good thing because it means that it's, a, it's they want to kind of migrate some people away from YouTube onto Spotify. You do it by leaving the clips up and maybe making the clips shorter than what they are because most of the clips he puts online now are similar to ones I do where it's just the whole subject, the whole time of the subject you're speaking upon, sort of like uploaded. This might be a thing where he gets a max limit of how long he can upload, of how long each clip of his clips can be, how long they can be, right? In terms of lengthwise, that might be a good way to get around it and also a good way to kind of get customers back onto Spotify. But I like that. Um, I'm, I do remember seeing um, a video, I forgot what it is, an article from Verge maybe of these two kids that are quite popular, have a quite popular podcast and they signed recently to Spotify and they were kind of doing a trial run um, with the video in-app uh, feature and I think they kind of segmented the trials to you know an A, B group of people that are subscribed to their feed and um, I'm sure the response might have been you know pretty cool judging on them ramping this up and kind of allowing Joe to do it now will this be something they roll out to partners like me and yourself like if you got if you're an indie if you're like a you got a band some you got a band or you're a rapper or whatever can you upload your own videos can you record them yourself at home and upload them or is it something that has to be done via some kind of set guidelines similar to what airbnb do in terms of posting pictures of your apartment they have you know they have these sort of stylistic guidelines in place for you to kind of help you out to get you know to get to make sure it kind of flows into what they kind of got as an idea and brand uh, direction with airbnb i wonder if that's going to be a thing um loads of interesting developments coming up it says here um rogan announced a deal on social media on tuesday not root touting spotify as the largest audio platform in the world shares of spotify shot up more than five percent after the news broke which is incredible to hear um closing in at 8.5 percent for the day to 175 uh 0.03 per share its highest closing price since october 2018 mamma mia the podcast is moving to spotify he wrote on instagram it'll remain free and it'll be the exact same show it's just a licensing deal so spotify won't have any creative control over the show they want me to just continue doing it the way i'm doing it right now which is great in it i think it also goes to show just how serious spotify are taking the podcasting thing um they've gone and got one of the biggest ones you know in the world and put them on their platform so you know they're taking it for real and it might mean that we see loads of other services getting signed up especially during the lockdown podcasts have become even more important than they were previously people are really in tune to them they really want to absorb the information and want to have something maybe in the background or just to watch that's you know, dissimilar that's maybe a little bit different from what they're seeing from the regular streaming services out there so it's a really big move really big power play from them and again it puts pressure on apple right apple kind of got 
grandfathered in because they were the only app that sort of defined what a podcast was and it was already built into your phone so you had no choice but to use it but they've not very they're not innovated that much the app itself is a little bit clunky um they're just not they've not given pro- podcast producers many tools to really amplify their voice via apple or whatever it may be there's just nothing built in that really kind of lends itself to seeing them taking it as a priority which is you know understandable considering the amount of cash reserves they've got and how well they're doing selling fucking headphones and shit right but come on this should be a little bit of a kick up the ass for the likes of apple you know the likes of soundcloud um any other street audio kind of primarily audio kind of streaming services out there to really kind of fix up look sharp i think audible i've got like a podcast in division two so there's loads of power plays happening i think in a lot in the next few months we'll see off the back of this for sure um rogan's deal spotify is worth more than 100 100 million the wall street journal reported which is interesting because i think they bought the ringer right completely for 200 so if what is if it's led to if we're led to believe it's true that he's getting 75 per year for three years or three to five years and that makes more sense in it considering it's a licensing deal too um he, they're not he's not giving away any intellectual property he owns a name he owns a brand he's just essentially just you know allowing them to kind of quote borrow it or rent it from him the show and put it on their platform for the next however many so years um, it continues since, since it's launched 2009 the drone experience has brought a large and low and extended engaged fan base tuning in to hear his discussions with a range of guests including comedians actors musicians MMA fighters authors artists and more he's also um, courted controversy hosting fringe far right proud guess that proud boys found a Gavin McGuinness and conspiracy among Alex Jones supposedly Alex Jones said a comment the other day that he was told under no you know given guarantees by Joe that he's now going to be allowed back on the show because I'm assuming part of the reason why Joe kind of left Spotify was because of the lack of free speech um, that's allowed on these platforms, right? They only allowed certain voices to speak on certain issues. Stuff gets flagged, gets taken down. And if you get those people on your channel, it could, you know, it basically affect your livelihood. And, you know, you can wake up tomorrow and have your complete channel completely get nuked. So that's not a real solution. So I think... Alex Jones mentioned something. I'm not sure if it's a joke or in passing that supposedly Joe gave him guarantees that he's going to be, he can be, you know, he's allowed back on your show once he gets back on Spotify because they want to, of course, they want to get the views, they want to get the numbers. And then once they see you hear what he actually has to say, I wonder if they're going to keep him on Alex Jones because, you know, these big tech companies are always changing the way, position they have on things based on, you know, wherever the wind's blowing. It says here, the distribution deal Joe will be available to Spotify's 286 million active monthly users. Now, I don't know what that means though. What is a monthly active user? Is that somebody that logs into it at least once a week? Or is that somebody that pays a monthly fee? What, what do they mean by that? But regardless, man, that number is not something to play with. That's a lot of people <laughs> listening to Pod, listen to mostly music on that platform imagine you kind of get the other chunk of people that listen to podcasts on there too so don't be surprised to see people like the fire and the kid your mum's house all those kind of people um jump over to spotify once this deal gets done uh, or once joe kind of you know sees what's going on there recommend some people from his circle to come on board as well don't be surprised it says yeah according to spotify the joe Rogan experience has the long been the most searched for podcast on its service wow so they've got ability to see things that people search for that's not on there that's pretty cool though isn't it that means if somebody search for an artist that isn't signed on spotify they have the means to basically pull that data and go and seek them out right from their label and maybe get a deal done in place right i'm assuming and, I'm, and more likely than not screw the artists out of any money but hey what can you do it's funny that too because i remember he didn't still gonna have a really interesting interview with steven tyler once about spotify and he was raging against them who was it somebody right and i think joe's not the best you know at this because he's not very musically inclined he probably doesn't know much about the business which a lot of people don't know because it's fucking complicated to get a grasp on but i'm pretty sure he was firmly he was quite against spotify during that era so it's interesting to see him kind of pivot away from it but you know if somebody offers you 75 million you're going to change your mind about some certain things and depending uh, it says here, yeah, Rogan, so a comedian and actor, was previously best known for his reality TV show. Oh yeah, and Fear Factor, what I mentioned in the early 2000, which are, which uh, he reprised in 2011, 2012. The Boston Lady also appeared on NBC sitcom News Radio. Currently, he has two stand-up specials on Netflix: Strange Times and the 2016 Triggered. Ramen, madness. Huh? Stocks went up, mate, when he got announced. That's a madness. But yeah, congrats to him. And of course, like I said 
interesting things are brewing for everybody else involved. It might actually push other people to get involved in podcasts, but push them out. Um, but I think it's a big power play and YouTube should be worried, man. They should be worried because they've been censoring people's voices way too long. People have now taken action. And again, imagine if all those kids, like the David Dobrik kind of kind, that kind of group decide to jump on Spotify, that will really spell, that will really be a little bit of a, you know, knock on the knees for them in general going forward, which again, you wouldn't like to see. You would prefer them just to kind of get on board and not silence people's voices and actually make YouTube fun again. But instead they've got in bed with fucking, you know, these late night TV shows and all that stuff and big major networks. And they're basically being used as a mouthpiece for the World Health Organization and things are just going a bit awry, which is, you know, an issue that I'm sure Joe played into Joe Rogan, my decision into making sure that he kind of jumps off um, YouTube and onto Spotify. And this might also spell the, you know, might also be an indication that he might be actually moving to texas as he mentioned we never know who sees let's see what happens and what goes on um what else is here i wanted to talk about the, oh this is the one this is and this on there so there's been a lot of talk about what's going to happen once the lockdown gets lifted right i'm of the belief that the first party that's going to be on is going to be out of this world right it's going to be insane it's going to be nuts um it's going to be full-on debauchery and uh people are gonna let go in a way that they haven't let go in a while um the spirits will be high it'll be electric it'll be euphoric it'll be sensational to be in that space those first couple of weeks once lockdown's lifted and people are allowed back in nightclubs will be magical but there has been i, I feel as if there's a pop there's a segment of the population that are a bit too eager to go out right and i've said from the beginning that i'm not opposed to anyone going out i'm not a titter tattle i'm not going to snitch on anyone i'm not going to walk past a park and take a picture of you while you're you know drinking your red stripe and picking your feet i don't give a shit but i'm still of the belief that for myself personally there's no there's nothing on the outside that's worth me risking my life for just because i'm bored at home there's nothing really i'm a bit you know i'm i'm an I'd say I'm an extroverted introvert in that regard, whereas there's nothing out there that I'm really willing to risk my life for to do. And again, I'm no, I'm in no rush. And until I can have the real product, until I can have the actual real experience, I'm in no rush to get some sort of half baked kind of you know, uh, copy of what I was used to beforehand. Now I know our lives not going to be the same once COVID is over. It's still going to be changed, right? We're still going to be have to adapt to a new normal. I understand that, but a new normal shouldn't be us, you know, dancing six meters apart. It shouldn't be us trying to make open trying to make a beer garden into a dance floor it shouldn't be us doing all these other nonsense things just so you can go outside listen to loud music that shouldn't be what it should be about and this video is another indication of it this is a video from um resident advisor right um actually they've actually got a video on it they've actually got a whole article let's actually read the whole article but let's let's watch the video and then we read the whole article but this is from resident advisor says in what might be the first dance party in europe in months gerdians and played a small socially distanced crowd in months the last night we're speaking uh, with the promoters on how they play pull this one off more deals forthcoming so this is video clip exclusive video clip from resident advisor of gerdians and playing in a party Okay, the vibe is amazing. It's electric. It's giving me actually goosebumps watching it. It's great to see people actually dancing and having a good time in the rave. That's one thing you know. It's right. People are actually dancing. I guess the the time they spent away from the dance floor, you know, has made them realize that oh, dance floors are for dancing, not for taking pictures and twirling around your friends and pretending you look hot, which people are doing there. But you know, it is what it is. People are dancing, having a good time. Cool. That's great. But to be dancing with these little circles, so they each basically, I guess they're all two meters apart. I have, Far you to be, they've all got masks and shit, and they're all twirling within their own little pre designed, predisposed space they have on the dance floor. Which to me is the most saddest thing I've seen in my life. It's super depressing. It's in one way, it's you know, again, ingenious from the promoters and from Gerd and anyone involved in it to get this done, getting it sorted. But 
in terms of what I want from a raving experience, it's not something that I'd want to do. It's not something that I'm willing to go outside for. No way. I'd much rather it be, you know, half capacity, move where you want, than us have to be inside social distancing and trying to make that a thing. It's just not a vibe for me. I can't do it. And this is an entire article, I think, from Resident Advisor talking about the whole situation. But again, like I said, I'd much rather wait. Um, and I think it is a good indication. It is maybe a good... um it maybe just kind of back up my point I made in a previous show where I said I think another way promoters and event managers and whatever they may be will get around it in terms of putting on raves will be that if they if they're able to have open air parties right in places that you know where the temperature kind of permits you could get away with having more people under a quote-unquote tent where you can kind of you know leave at you know any number of exits because it's open um then you would have to in a close i think root arena because we'd have to say or have to agree that nightclubs aren't going to come back until next year right maybe middle of next year um possibly until a vaccine is found you no insurance company is going to want to be liable or kind of stick their neck on the line to have people in a close confined space under a roof somewhere and get sued whereas i don't i'm not sure where the legality stands if you get you know catch corona in the middle of an open air party somewhere in the middle of a park it's quite hard to kind of knock anyone for getting it so that might be a way they would get around it but if there's a solution to to spray paint the floor with little circles you have to dance on count me out man i don't want anything to do that whatsoever i'd much rather wait watch a live stream drink a couple of whiskeys and talk my fingers in my living room personally so this is from resident advisor said gerdy anson played a social distance open air party in germany last night um gerdy anson played a social distance open party in germany last night um Mansa venue cocoon sorry coconut beach a local promoter taka takatuka hosted what might be the first dance party in europe for months yeah considering my proper last rave was Berghain, what in like the end of march this is that that feels like a, a complete lifetime ago isn't it? it says here yeah, the lineup included uh steve sticks and kyle lorenz torsten kargan Torsten Kager, so in addition to the running back of a label head, in order to enable social distancing, it says the 22,000 capacity outdoor venue put up to 100 tickets for sale for 70 euros each. Bloody hell, which included 21 euros worth of food and drink, <coughs> which might not be a bad deal, in it, bro? Could that be a thing though? Once clubs reopen, that they start doing this thing where they pike the prices up in con, you know ridiculous amount so that you feel like you're supporting the scene so you're quote unquote saving our scene is that a thing because that'd be horrible if then again this is a good approach i think you know for a berlin venue to give you 21 dollars 21 euros worth of free food in your ticket i think that's a lot of food you lose usually they're not going to be tight on it but hopefully that's not a thing that you know gets done by other clubs in terms of just you know as a weird way for us to save the scene when they're just lying in their own pockets i hope no let's see um the event description says coconut beach would have had sell ha, would have had to sell tickets for 20 times that listed price which acknowledged was already stretched for many to match the pre-pandemic revenue um of course we understand this is a quote, a quote of course we understand that some of our guests are a bit disappointed as they don't have the money to join the venue manager director thomas piper to resident advisor as soon as the regulations for live events will be raised to 250 we will lower the ticket price which is fine in it which is fine i guess i think if you're that desperate to go outside and if someone's willing to offer you yeah if you're that desperate to go outside and take the risk and someone's willing to open their space to accommodate you and they charge you know two times what the value is or three times you have to make an informed decision and you can't complain if they do that because you know you've agreed into this weird little dance that you're doing i've got the space you want to come and dance how much you want to pay that's okay and if they didn't say later on we'll lower the prices once everything gets back to normal that's fine but hopefully it doesn't remain like a thing that happens as a weird way to save our scene because it's not really you know it's not saving our scene it's saving your club which is fine but you know let's call it what it is um it continues here despite the hefty price hike the event sold out in 15 minutes well done man going on sale may 18th may 16th sorry djs also charged lower fees with johnson cutting his by 80 percent bloody hell he came out for 20 percent of his fee that's mad well done for him man joint private broadcasting wd reports piper told wdr that they would not be making any profit from this event with the event goal being to cover costs and not to send and not to send a sign of life and to send a sound of life okay that's brilliant that's great to hear that's kind of like the old school um kind of you know 
ideology or you know the old school mindset from when i used to promote parties right it was just so you could be cool amongst your friends and also cover cost as long as you could pay your djs and you know make sure you cover your printing costs for your flyers or whatever it be in stickers and you, your friends had a good time and they you know had loads of pictures they can show on social that was already a win you didn't really care about you know making the big bucks really because you have always you weren't in it for that and you weren't ever going to make that anyway so what's the point of worrying about it so it continues it says um all the these were required to wear a mask those who did not have a face covering could buy one at the door the event um, description says the venue would make all the effort to be hygienic once inside the venue which was only half in use for a better atmosphere ravers were assigned a table and a dance floor choke circle the only space they were allowed to remove face mask or set at 1.5 meters apart Bars were marked to indicate safe spacing and fitted with purpose shields to protect staff who were wearing masks in accordance to Germany guidelines. The raised DJ booth had also been paid by Xperia on the dance floor. Non cash methods of payment were encouraged but not required. Okay, awesome. So to eliminate any touch points. But whew, I wonder what people were doing when they were going to the toilets, eh? I wonder if everyone was on their best behavior in that regard. What do you do for a social distance party with, you know, only 20% of the occupants in there? What do you do? Do you have someone manning the loose as well to make sure no one's doing anything naughty and wiping down the surfaces? Or do you have little wet wipes next to the toilet so people can wipe them down once they finish doing what well, you know what? Oh, that's funny. It says, I'm, it says, continues here. I'm well aware of the fact that this is by no means an ordinary party, Gody Anson told Ari. Again, Gody Anson's one of my favorite DJs too, by the way. Let that be known. He's one of the best DJs on the scene. Um, one of my favorites. Very versatile, very entertaining DJ. Really good um you know, um, he had an amazing career as a journalist actually for a bit, which he kind of poo poos. But I thought his opinions and his views on music were very interesting. Did some solid interviews on Red Bull Music Academy back in the day. Just a general solid egg. Um, went to actually go see him at XOY Ho 2 a few weeks, uh, a few months ago. It continues here. It says, um, I was already invited to play that date before the pandemic or whatever you want to call it happen. So when I got the call to play for a considerably shrunken edition, 100 people only, I thought of a prank at first and after some reflection on it, I agreed to do it. I felt that it was kind of my duty to do my part in helping Thomas Piper for Dockland's Coconut Beach and his crew pull this off. Yeah, it was good. It's good to have like the first one go off in it without a hitch. Congrats to them. Um, Jansen continued, whatever you take of, whatever you, whatever you take on all of this, part of this is how to deal with it and how to make things possible again that were taken as a given or well, taking all into account it went really well a bit of sweet mixture of nostalgia and hope i had fun and i hope the dancers too it felt like a reassurance that it can go in some way shape or form until things get back to normal here's a video from the party that we obviously saw earlier so yeah it's a feel good factor again like i said but for me it's super depressing i wouldn't want to go to it myself i'd much rather wait until things get back to normal but i also understand the need for the bar owner and the event booker or whatever it may be of these spaces to get things back and running some way shape or form especially you know with people's wages to pay and the scene to revive you just want to feel as if you're back doing the things you were doing before like i said like the jansen mentioned that you thought were given so um great to see it happening great to see him starting again but i would like to see raving season come back the way i at least envisioned it at least previously in my previous life where before the pandemic spread didn't do any kind of dancing in a circle but you know fair play to everyone involved it looked like fun for those that were there i guess but yeah that looks like the, you know that that is at the end of the rave in it right or the big or the start or, or when you come in too early or when you leave or when you're there too late that's what it basically looks like um yeah i, I just can't do it man i just cannot i need more people i need it to be darker um i need it more dingy i need it more I need to be more on the edge but hey what do i know so that's the 316 episode 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 done thanks so much for tuning in as per usual more information got myself check my website actionzinger.com for more links down below and if it's your first time watching via youtube of course smash that like button hit subscribe if you're listening via the podcast app leave me a five star view review sorry and share the episode with your friends so everyone can find it and all that good stuff yeah so until then take care be safe and i'll see you guys again tomorrow bye